Welcome to the scurrychurchofchrist.org. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed uh, for lack of knowledge. Please don't let this happen to you. Feel free to contact us at scurrychurchofchrist.org uh, where you can visit us and any Bible question that you may have, we will do our best to answer. We are so glad you decided to visit us. Morning. I want to. I thought about something the other day, and when we're dealing with, when we're dealing with having access to God, and as we look at that, we know that if we're found faithful, turn to Second Chronicles chapter, uh, chapter twenty-six. Second Chronicles chapter twenty-six. Then we'll quickly go to Leviticus chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. But as I, I want you to think about uh, something this morning, and as we know that uh, we, if we're found faithful, the Bible teaches we, because of, because of the blood of Christ, we have access to God the Father. So we have to go through Christ. So if I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father, but through me. And so that's how God set it up, and that's how it is. And so I want you to see something, and as we know, as we'll get there, and in Hebrew it says we must, we can now uh, appear boldly to the throne of grace. Boldly. So with full confidence that I can go to the throne of grace where the Father is. But I want us to see that it's now. And, and, and we look at the future, but we, are at, we have access now at this moment. Those who are in Christ have access now to uh, speak to the Father through Jesus Christ. Now, but I want you to see how interesting this is in Second Chronicles 26 and verse 16, notice this king. But when he became strong, his heart was so proud that he acted corruptly. And he was unfaithful to the Lord, his God. Notice what had happened when he became proud. And he says he was unfaithful to the Lord, his God. And for notice what he did. He entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. That was the job of the priest. Then Azariah, the priest, entered after him, and with him, 80 priests of the Lord, uh, valiant men. That's how serious it is. That's how serious it was in the first covenant. That Notice that this is the king, thought he had the authority to do what he wants to do, and and Azariah the priest entered after him and 80 with him. It's a serious matter. They opposed Uzziah the king and said to him, it is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn incense. See that? Get out of the sanctuary, for you have been unfaithful and will have no honor from the Lord God, get out. He's the king, and so uh, in his mind, he had authority to forsake the law of God. They said, "Get out." But I want you to see the picture. It's he's standing there with he's standing there with eighty priests. It's a serious matter. But notice um, Isaiah in verse nineteen. But Isaiah, with a censer in his hand. Uh, for burning incense, he's going to do it anyway, was enraged. And while he was enraged with the priest, notice this. The leprosy broke out on his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord beside the altar of incense. God did that. But notice where he is, beside the altar of incense. He's not supposed to be there. You, you see, God is standing by his word. He was warned by 
Azariah, then 80 priests. He's not supposed to be there. And so uh, he does it, decides to do what he's going to do, but leprosy breaks out. See, broke out on his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord beside the altar of incense. He wasn't supposed to be there. Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked at him, and behold, he was leprous on his forehead, and they hurried him out of there. He's unclean. The king. And he himself also hastened to get out because the Lord had smitten him. Notice that he himself hastened to get out. Now he gets out. See? But notice verse 21. It's a serious matter. King Isaiah was a leper to the day of his death. Wow. And he lived in a separate house, being a leper, for he was cut off from the house of the Lord. And Jotham, his son, was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Notice that. That's how he died. And that's not even in the Holy of Holies. That was in the holy place, but he wasn't supposed to be there. That's not even, that's near the holy of holies. And so he, God turned him into, gave him leprosy and he was unclean until his death. And so I want you to see it's a serious matter. Turn to Leviticus chapter, uh, chapter 16 and chapter 16 and verse one and and so we, it's, it's a serious matter. It's, I want you to think about this. It's, it was serious in the first covenant. He didn't go into the Holy of Holies. He went into the holy place where the priests go continually. But he wasn't supposed to go in there and burn incense. God confirmed that's true by uh, he was struck with leprosy, but not, uh, not, not, for a year or months, whatever, until the day he died. And notice in chapter 16 and verse 1, now the Lord spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron. You know, that's Nadab and Abihu because they offer strange incense. It's a serious matter. See, and when they had approached the presence of the Lord and died because they approached him wrong. Now watch. The Lord said to Moses, tell your brother Aaron that he shall not enter at any time into the holy place inside the veil. That's going into the holy of holies. That's where the presence of God is. Now watch. And so he says, before the, notice this, before the mercy seat, which is on the ark, or he will die. Why, God? He says, for I will appear in the cloud over the mercy seat. Aaron shall enter the holy place with this, with a bull for a sin offering and a ram for the burnt offering. But listen, if he does not do it according to my will, he will die. This is, we get the idea uh, of the mercy seat. The mercy seat, of course, was the lid on top of the ark. It's like God is sitting there and you look at Psalm 99 and verse 1. It says, the Lord reigns. Let the people tremble. He is enthroned above the cherubim. Let the earth shake. He's enthroned above the cherubim. That's above the mercy seat. You have the cherubim on each side of the mercy seat of the lid. Cherubim on one, this side and cherubim on this side. And so God is sitting there. That's his place. That's his throne. And so anyone that entered in there, not according to his will, who broke his law, uh, would die. And so only a high priest would, was able to enter there once a year. And if he did that any time after that or before that, he would die. And so, uh, when he, now watch this. I want you to see this. So we, and, and so we know that that's, that's where the presence of God was. Now I want you to go to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, and, and I want you to see this. Hebrews chapter 4, and look at verse uh, 15. 
Hebrews chapter 4 and verse uh, 15. Now watch this. And so, but now let's go to Hebrews chapter 10 first. Hold your spot there. You know how I am. Nothing is going to change. Nothing will ever change. Hebrews chapter 10. I want you to see this in verse. Uh, notice what he says here. And therefore, look at verse 19. He says, Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus. So since we have confidence, I like that, to enter this place by the blood of Jesus. You see, we have confidence. Now go to chapter 4 and verse 15. He says, look at verse 16 of chapter 4 and verse 15. Let us draw near with confidence. See that? That's with boldness. We have confidence uh, to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So notice this. I want you to see that. He's saying, now let's go with confidence. I, but I want you to see that we're going before the presence of God. Now he's talking about something that's happening now. The later is the fruition. If I'm found faithful, then that's why I'll, I'll be with Christ forever. Because watch this, in 1 Corinthians 15, 24, then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to God and Father, when he has abolished all rule and authority and power. That's, that's later on. I'm, go, I'm going to go back to that, but I'm going to show you something. But he's talking about, let's, have this confidence uh, to go before him now. You see, because watch this. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence. See, not like the old covenant, they were afraid to go before him. In Exodus, they told Moses, uh, you speak to us, not God. They were afraid. You remember Moses was going up to the mountain and when he came down and gave uh, them instructions, they said, you speak to us. There's no confidence because they knew that uh, there was, uh, they saw the thundering and the lightnings, etc. and they were afraid. There, there's no boldness there. There's no, w w there's no confidence. Moses, you, you speak to us. We don't want to speak to God. You speak to us. There's no, we're talking about the presence of God. And so, but he's the opposite saying now because of the blood of Christ, we have confidence and boldness. I can Go with boldness and confidence that I can go before the presence of the Father. But it starts now. But notice how I know he's talking about now. He says, verse 16, therefore let us draw near, see, with confidence to the throne of grace. I need help. It's a throne of grace now. See, it changed. So because of the blood of Christ now is a throne of grace. It's a place where I can receive the help that I'm looking for now. At first, God said, uh, don't come in. And, and, and if those who, even those who disobeyed him that were near the Holy of Holies, they were in the holy place, they were still suffered. And that's how serious it was. And so it wasn't like a throne of grace. But notice what he's saying. I, I can come near to the throne of grace when I need help. It's like, I don't deserve it, but God is going to give me what I don't deserve. How am I going to get this? Why do I get this? I get it because of Jesus Christ. He made it possible for me to go before him. So that we may have, see that? So that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. See, I'm a Christian, and, and, and I'm, I'm looking for the climax, the fruition at the end of time to be with the Father forever. But I need to know that I can go before him now through Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is the mediator. See, he's the go-between. And because of him, I can, I can pray to the Father. Now, now, watch this. I want you to go to Acts chapter 8. Go to Acts chapter 8, or rather Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8. And what I want to show you something. I can go and speak to him now because of Jesus Christ. 
Now, I don't know everything that's going on up there, but I know what's going on up there in the heavenly realm. And you see what I'm saying is, in Acts chapter, or rather, Romans chapter 8 and verse 22. Watch this. Romans chapter 8 and verse 22. For we know that the creation groans and suffers uh, the pains of childbirth together until now. Not only this, but we are we are, but also we ourselves having the first fruits of the spirit. See that? Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting eagerly. Waiting, why are you groaning? Waiting eagerly for the adoption of sons. In other words, we're, we're, we're looking for the future. I'm groaning. Uh, it's like a, I desire within to, to be with God. I felt like that yesterday. Well, actually this morning. It's like that. I just wanted to, it's like I, I know that's, that's a reality. And, and I'm just looking forward to the day when I could see it. That may be strange to some people who don't understand that, but it's something that we look forward to. And, and, and so it's something in the future that we know it's true. And we want it so bad. Like Paul said, I desire to be with Christ, but in other words, I'll stay here because it's beneficial to you. But what was the desire to be with Christ? That was the future. And, and so you see that he's groaning, they're groaning within themselves. What, why? Waiting eagerly for the adoption of our sons, redemption of our body. I'm waiting for it. I'm groaning for it. That's my desire. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, but Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. That's what I'm seeking. Notice, notice verse 24. For in hope we, sit, listen, for in hope we have been saved. But no, I like this. But hope that is seen is not hope. That's true. That's true. For who hopes for what is already seen, what he already sees? That's true. I don't see it, but I read about it. I, I can read what God gives me. It's a, I can read about it, but it's not, it's not the reality of it. But I don't see it. I'm hoping to see it. And as I think about this, what are we groaning for? Understand what his desire was to be with God for eternity. And he knew that by the grace of God, he, uh, God sent Jesus Christ and he was saved, being obedient to the doctrine because of his salvation, because of his obedience. And he stayed, it's like he knew if he stayed faithful, then he would be with, he would see Jesus and be with the Father forever. That's what he's groaning. He does that. But notice verse 26. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. See, this is, ha this is something happening in heaven that shows me that heaven is wide open. So in the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep, too deep for words. Now, I don't understand that. But it's happening in the heavenly realm. It's, you understand it? There's, and so you see there's an opening to the Father. Because what is it? What is the intercession? It's almost there's, there's a go-between. And so, and so and as I looked at this, it's like, okay, we'll see that Jesus Christ intercedes. So why can't they both do this? And I, why can't they both do it? Who says they can't? And, but I want us to see, so we get in, sometimes we get into it with this and that. The, it's like there's an, we're, it's open now. Our prayers are taken to the Father. You understand that? Because he's on the throne, he's there, and you have the Holy Spirit, we'll see Jesus Christ. It, it's all happening in the heavenly realm. And so they know what I'm dealing with down here. They know, they know how I feel down here. They know what I'm going through. When it's so bad that the words just don't come out, they know exactly what I mean. But where is it going? It's going to the Father. See, that's access to him. So it's like we're waiting for the, the end of it. We're waiting for the day when he, uh, Jesus delivers the kingdom to the Father. But we have access right now. And, and, and as I pray to him, it goes to the Father. But it has to go through Jesus Christ. That's just how he set it up. And that's how we should be. And, and so there's something happening in heaven. I can understand that. 
but I know that they understand me. They understand how I feel. They understand what I want to say. They understand me. They're working on my behalf. Now, that's deep to me. That's the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You see, they're all working together to help me. And so what do I do? He says, the prayers of the righteous avail as much. In other words, they have strength. And so I have to make sure that I'm righteous in the eyes of God, following his law, living according to his will. And when I suffer tribulation, I'm praying to him. And it can, can get so bad where you, the words don't even come out. And they know exactly what I'm talking about. But you have to understand, that's to the Father. Say, watch. And he says, watch this, though. Verse 27, and he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And then I look at uh, verse 34. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus, who is the one that condemns? It's actually a question, rhetorical question. Christ Jesus is he who died, yes. Rather, who was raised, who, who was at the right hand of God, who intercedes for us. There it is again. So Christ is right there because everything goes through him. That's how God has it. Everything goes. He, he intercedes. And it, it's, it's, I like 1 Timothy 2, 5. For there was one God and there was one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. And so you see here, the Holy Spirit does what he does. You see, Christ is right there. Do you realize how important our prayers are to God, that they go up to God? They go up to the Father? But we still have to go through Jesus Christ? Even though the Spirit does what he does here and it's happening in heaven, we still have to go through Jesus Christ? They never break the doctrine? See, watch this. Through Christ, it's interesting. Read Colossians 3.17, it says, and we get through Christ, our prayers go to the Father. Very interesting. So through Christ, our prayers go to the Father. In 1 Peter 2, 5, through Christ, our spiritual, listen to this. Through Christ, our spiritual sacrifices go to the Father. Through Christ. Through Christ, our spiritual sacrifices go to the Father. It all goes through Christ. See? And it was interesting when I see that. So God is working with us. It's like in Revelation and when God is bringing judgment on Owen Empire for the crimes they committed against this, uh, the world and against his, his church, his kingdom. And, and, and it, you see in Revelation, the prayers go up to heaven. The prayers are going up to the heavenly realm and he's returning judgment. He hears them. The prayers are going up to the heavenly realm. And you notice when you read Revelation, the Holy Spirit is there, Jesus is there, and the Father is there. Read Romans, uh, rather, Revelation chapter 4 and Revelation chapter 5. They're all there. The prayers of the saints are going up to the Father, but it's through Jesus Christ. And they are reacting. See that? Understand that. They make it plain that the judgment is coming because God heard the prayers. He saw what's going on. He's long-suffering. He wanted salvation for all, but judgment finally came because of what they were doing. You see, and so we have to understand, well, I want you to think about something. What have I done that's, that's, that God can't heal, or rather God can't straighten out, or God can't fix in my life? With, all, with God, all things are possible. It doesn't matter what I've done what I'm going through, God can fix it. Now, whatever I'm doing that, that's con, that contradicts his word, if I'm willing to repent, God can fix it. Does that make sense? If I'm willing to repent and change that my ways, the Bible says what? Uh, repent and believe the gospel. That's the good news. And so when, when I, if I'm willing to read about this good news and obey the gospel, this good news because I can't repent, and I'm willing to do that, Everything is possible with God. There's nothing impossible with God. You see, and, and so it's very interesting. It's like God is on the throne, 
and there's the mediator, and they're all, they all they are all working. But the key is that we have access to the Father like we never had before. That's why it says, "Go come boldly to the throne of grace." Notice he calls it that. He calls it the throne of grace. I can receive the help that I need in a time of need. I don't have to run and hide. Or if it's no, it, it, remember that. Remember, you see that in, in the book of Hebrews that the priest went into the holy place every day, continually. It says that, but they didn't go. They didn't go past the veil to the holy of holies. Now everybody can go in. But I want us to see that it's now. See, we have access to God now. And now watch. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm trying to want you to get the point. Christ is the mediator. Christ is the intercession. He intercedes. Christ, Christ, Christ. Right? Now, now, I'm going to go back to the beginning. Notice when, it, this is very interesting, notice when it ends. Everything we do, we have go through Christ. That's how God designed it. He earned it. He, 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 that's, it's his kingdom. He purchased the church with his blood. It's his. He's the king sitting on the throne. So no one comes to the Father but through me. It's very interesting. This is how we're going to end this. This is how it ends. Watch this. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom of God to the Father. There's going to be no more need for intercession. There's, going, there's, no, there's no need for a mediator anymore. Why? Because we'll be right there with him. See, there's a need, right? right there, there's a need for an intercession, and his blood was continued to, to work every day for us, and it's always going to be there. And so there's a need. You see how the, the system is set up. There's a need for a go-between. There's a need that there's God, there's Christ, and there's man. He's the go-between. But when he deliver, delivers up the key, no, notice that. When he deliver, delivers up the key to God, there's no need for an intercessor. There's no need for a go-between. It's over. But it starts here. See, I, I have to, to be with God, to be with Christ. I first I have to get in Christ. See? And when I say that, sometimes I leave people with that statement. Like people who are listening on social media. And you make the statement, in order, to, in order for me to be with the Father, to have access to the Father, to be with Christ, have to get in Christ. Now, here's how it works. If a person cares, they'll want to know how to get into the, to the kingdom. They'll want to know how to be saved. A person doesn't care, they just said, that was a good lesson. It was all right. See? Do we care? Do we care? And I'll leave this with us. In Acts chapter 10, it tells us how to get in to Jesus Christ right there in the same book. Right there in the same book, it tells us how to get into Christ. Acts chapter 2, it tells us how to get into Christ. Galatians chapter 3, it tells us how to get into Christ. See, are we interested? Are we interested? If we are and we do what needs to be done to be saved, then we, not, we will not only have access to the Father at the end of time, but we have access to the Father today. And we who are in his kingdom, those who have been baptized for the mission of sins according to God's will, God adds them to his kingdom. We have access to the Father. He knows what we struggle with. He knows our tribulations. He knows who we are. He knows exactly what's going on. And we have access to him through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the key. 
Are you in Christ this morning? Anyone here this morning needs to repent? Jesus said, except you repent, shall all likewise perish. If we can help you, please come out and stand and sing a song for the invitation.